is Rage Darling, and today we're going to take a look at Elgato's new microphones, the Wave 1 and the Wave 3. Recently, Elgato surprised us with two new microphones, but that's not all. They also coupled it alongside an awesome software called the Wavelink. We're going to review the features of both microphones, as well as do a sound test with both unedited raw audio and the Wavelink features, and go headfirst into the software. Timestamps for each section will be below, so feel free to skip to what you want. Right, let's begin. Both microphones come in similar boxing with similar contents inside of it, but once the microphones are out, there's a slight difference to the hardware of them. Let's start with the Wave 1. The Wave 1 has a nice sleek black body with an illuminated volume dial on the front, and this is what is used to control the headphone output and the microphone mute. On the back of the microphone is a headphone aux input, and next to it is a USB-C port for power and connectivity to your PC. The Wave 3 has a similar sleek black body, but the illuminated dial is accompanied by three LED icons, a mic, headphone, and mix. The dial controls the microphone gain, the monitor output volume, and the audio mix. It also has LED dots which represent the sources and the levels. On the very top of the microphone is also a touch-sensitive mute button that illuminates red when the microphone is muted. Both have heavy metal stands and a boom arm adapter inside the box, allowing you to connect it to a microphone arm if you wanted to. They also have the same 17mm electric capsule inside and have a cardioid pattern, with the only difference being the sample rate. The Wave 1 has an industry standard 48MHz sample rate, but the Wave 3 doubles it to 96. Now there's a big debate on whether this is actually useful for streaming, but the main gist is if you're going to be processing your audio post-production, maybe for podcasting or voice acting, then having that extra sample rate will allow you for better audio to be edited. Now that we've gone over the hardware, let's put the microphones to the test. Make sure that you're wearing headphones for this so that you can really hear all the audio details that both mics have to offer. I'm going to be showing you complete, unedited, raw audio with none of the wave leak features and then show you audio with the low cut filter and clip guard enabled. This is what the Wave 1 sounds like with complete, unedited, raw audio at 20% gain. This is what the Wave 3 sounds like with complete, unedited audio at 20% gain. This is what the Wave 1 sounds like with complete unedited and raw audio at 40% gain. This is what the Wave 3 sounds like with complete unedited audio at 40% gain. This is what the Wave 1 sounds like at 100% gain with the clip guard and low cut technology added onto it through the Wavelink. This is the Wave 3 microphone at 100% gain with the clip guard and low cut filter enabled in the Wavelink. I wouldn't be able to use this at 100% gain without the clip guard or the low cut filter enabled because it would virtually render the audio unusable. It would be so distorted and uncomfortable for anyone to listen to. You wouldn't ever have your microphone at 100%, you'd have it between 20 and 40%. So let's turn that down. Moving on to the software now, this is probably the most important part of the whole product release because it gives you total control over all of your audio channels. It only works with an Agato mic, so the Wave 1 and the Wave 3 at the moment, but the software itself is so incredibly useful. Now you might be thinking, oh, software's boring, software's boring, but after watching this, I won't be surprised if the main reason you buy this mic is because of the software. Now let's take a deep dive into the Wavelink software and see exactly how it works. Now, it does look very scary at first if you're not familiar with audio control software, but if you have used streaming software in the past, then you will probably understand how it works. It essentially compresses all of your system's audio, so your microphone, your game audio, your alerts, your music, etc., into one simple audio output. It shows up on your PC as Wavelink Stream, which you select as your audio input in your streaming software, for example, OBS Studio. With the Wavelink software, you can control up to eight different audio sources, which are filtered in via your PC sound settings. At the top of the window is a button that quickly snaps open your PC audio settings, so you can select which channel a program runs through. For example, if you want Spotify to be controlled via music, then you simply select Wavelink Music as the input channel. The sliders below each audio channel do something different. The slider on the left indicates the monitor feedback volume, so the volume of the audio in your headphones. This is what you will hear and what you will hear only. 
On the right hand side is the stream volume, so the volume that your stream will hear. The reason why these two are separated is because you might need something a different level of audio than what the stream needs it at. For example, if your friends in Discord are blaringly loud for your stream, but really quiet for you, you can turn the stream volume down, but keep your monitor volume up. Or, if you're crawling through the grass in PUBG and you rely on the footsteps to indicate where the enemies are, but your stream wants you to listen to Brain Power for the 10th time today, you can turn the volume of the music down for you while still keeping it loud enough for your stream to enjoy. With this feature, you also have the ability to listen to something completely different to what your stream hears. So say for example you want to listen to copyrighted music while streaming, but you don't want to risk getting a DMCA strike, you can mute the stream output slide for Spotify, but play something Twitch safe to the stream via another audio channel using Pretzel Rocks or YouTube for example, and then muting the monitor output slide for that. That way you and your stream can both listen to something completely independent of each other. So now Stream is listening to no copyright sounds, but I am listening to my favorite band on Spotify. Pretty neat, right? When you change the volume of channels, you will need to check exactly what the stream hears to make sure that all the levels are correct. And you can do this by going down to the ear icon next to Stream Mix and clicking it. Toggling that means that you will now hear exactly what the stream does and you can alter it accordingly. Similarly, you can do the same for your monitor mix too. It's important to select the right output device for your monitor mix. You can either plug your headphones directly into the back of the microphone, or you can select a device from the drop-down menu. Earlier I mentioned that the Wavelink could do some pretty neat things to the microphone in order to benefit the quality, and here is where you can actually explore those features. On the microphone drop-down you can see your input level, you can control your gain, your output volume, and your stream mix. Remember the three icons and the LED indicator on the Wave 3? Well, this essentially replicates that, but in software format, which means that you can put it on your stream deck and control it on there. Of course, everything you do in the software can be controlled directly on the stream deck. Now let's look at the real reason why we're here, the enhanced low cut filter and the clip guard. These are very basic and very easy to understand, but they are so powerful and necessary for every streamer. Let's have a look at what they do. Now that I've got the gain turned down to 40%, I want to talk a little bit about what the clip guard is and why it is really useful for when you're streaming. This is what the microphone sounds like at 40% gain with clip guard and low cut filter enabled. What the clip guard essentially does is it lowers down your audio levels and caps it at a certain volume so it doesn't peak over an uncomfortable volume of audio. Basically in simple terms that means it gives you a lot of headroom to be able to louden your voice so when you are gaming and you are getting owned by the enemies it gives you room to be able to scream so for example someone get me some light ammo I'm gonna die! If I didn't have that with clip guard it would be so horrible to listen to. You know what? Let, let's give it a go. All right, that's clip guard and low cut filter disabled. So let me try that again. Someone give me some light ammo, I'm gonna die. Now you can see and hear that that was so incredibly distorted. With clip guard enabled, it allows you to be able to, you know, shout and, and scream with your microphone without your stream audience shouting at you back saying, headphone warning, do you mind? So you have the freedom to be able to not have to worry about the volume of your own microphone at all times, which is a life-saving feature for any streamer that, you know, gets a little bit rowdy. Alongside that as well, you have the low cut filter as well, which is gonna remove any low frequencies that your microphone picks up. So that's just gonna better improve the quality of your microphone audio. So the Wavelink software itself is a pretty handy and useful tool for streamers who need a simple yet effective way to control their audio sources. Let's talk about what I think in conclusion. Personally, I think that in a raw and unedited environment and to the untrained ear, both microphones sound kind of similar. This is because OBS Studio only allows up to 48 megahertz and the industry standard is that anyway. But having double the sample rate on the Wave 3 does mean that you'll have a high quality broadcast if you were to go and edit your audio. 
As for the hardware differences between the two, everything you can do on the Wave 3, you can do via the Wavelink software. So if you can't stretch your budget to the Wave 3, then don't feel like you're missing out on a lot. As long as you have a stream deck, you can essentially replicate what the Wave 3 can do at a touch of a button. It is nice to have the touch sensitive mute button on the top and the gain, monitor and mix control right in front of you, but these aren't necessary things, they're more like nice things to have. Honestly, the biggest game changer is the Wavelink software. I think Elgato have done an amazing job on creating something that streamers definitely need to have in their streaming setup yet again. It's compact, it's simple, it's easy to understand, but it is incredibly effective and it'll dramatically improve anyone's stream quality. I hope this helped you out by going through the microphone features, doing a sound test and going into the software. Give it a like and a subscribe to this channel for more videos like these and come to check me out on Twitter, at RageDowling. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.